Welcome back everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a new video for you guys. I'm very excited for this one. So really quick, before I continue, I just wanted to uh, give you guys a little preview of some of the projects that are coming up for fall. So this is gonna be my fall 2020 collection to show you guys so we can start getting ready for Christmas gifts. So if you see something that you like now, um, just be ready and make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so that way as soon as you see the thumbnail of when I upload the tutorial for it, you are good to go and you have a new present to give to your family member. Guys, here's the first one. I'm getting a Halloween sweater done. So this yarn is by Hot Knit Yarn. Check that out. Look at that. Ooh, it looks like a comic book. That's so cool. It, the, it's been playing out really, really nice. This is uh, Shelly, she hand dyed this yarn. This one's called Haunted House. And guys, like, look at that. The way it just looks on screen is amazing. In terms of another hand dyed yarn project, I got this shirt. Look at that, oh, that is crazy. On camera, look, let me see if I can get more of it. Oh, wow, that is playing out so crazy on camera. But anyways, this is a uh, shirt. I'm finishing it up now. I might redo it in a different sized hook because I don't like how heavy it is. I want it to feel a little bit lighter, but it's got a collar here at the top and it's two different colors. So look out for that tutorial. This one was only with three hanks of yarn. So even though it's very expensive hand dyed yarn, you only really need three. Uh, one of the final projects, there's two more, but I haven't started them yet. But these are the ones that I have started. This is a men's uh, fisherman wool. So I recently just got a yarn support box from Lion Brand Yarns, and this is one of them. So I'm using their fisherman wool yarn and just alternating between two colors. That's all it is, I'm just cutting. So nothing too complicated. It's just playing around with placement of the yarn and you get that cool effect. Nothing really special, just cutting and alternating colors. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see when they are coming up on the channel. But so far so good, right? I'm trying to give you guys a different, a wide variety of color because I understand some people like neutral tones, some people like the blue tones and some people like the wacky crazy tones. So I'm giving you guys a little bit of everything and yeah, which one's your favorite so far? This is the real reason why we are here. So this video specifically is to show you guys, it's a challenge video. Now I was challenged to create garments from head to waist, not head to toe because I'm not making any pants, um, from head to waist using only one ball of this yarn. And I am talking, of course, of the Karen Anniversary Cakes. These are new. They have been dragging at Michael's to put these in the stores, but I'm assuming if they uploaded the website now officially, because we've only seen photos of this, then I'm pretty sure you can find them at your stores. If you're not part of the Facebook group for uh, Karen or Lion Brand, then you should definitely do that because we all help each other out and when all of this stuff is coming out or you know where it's at, we let each other know. So a little bit of context. These cakes, this isn't actually the first time that they come out. I believe they came out as a test run about a couple, few months ago. They literally only selected very small amounts of Michaels and they got them. Like this is huge guys. Like this is the biggest ball of yarn I've ever, on camera it looks big, but look at my head. <laughs> now look at that compared to it because I know you're watching me on your screen, but that is huge and You know what? Let me go get an original cake so I can compare it. All right So I got some skinny cakes here and I'm gonna put them next to this one so you guys can see the comparison mm. Like it's still taller than two skinny cakes put on top of each other. It's still not big enough so Just keep that in mind with over a thousand yards in this ball i pretty sure I can make a hat, a scarf, and a sweater with just one ball. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Using a combination of clothes and open stitches, we can get creative and make some yarn magic. A lot of you guys like it when I geek out to the yarn. This is so soft. Oh, there was a question if how similar is this yarn to a chunky cake? Let me go show you. Okay, so I got a chunky cake here. This is also a size super bulky six, and I'm gonna put them side by side. 
We're gonna analyze these because I don't think they are the same as much as I want to think they are. I don't know, they seem similar to me. I don't see a big difference. This does seem a little bit softer, um, but I believe it's just called an anniversary cake just because of the size and how much you're getting out of it. So design-wise, uh, this color scheme is super funky. It's very hipster, I love it. It's playing from cranberries to browns, I mean cranberries to purples, to rose golds, to greens and teals. So, I think the idea is I want to make the sweater first so I know how much yarn I have left over for the scarf and the hat. Because then if that's the case of not having too much yarn or sufficient, I can make the hat, the beanie, very open concept with open stitches and the scarf same thing. So I could just use window panes and stuff and V stitches. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make the sweater first, then we're gonna make the hat and then what's left, we're gonna do either scarf or bandana or We'll just leave it up to that. But I wanna make sure I have a scarf and a hat for sure. First thing is first, everyone always asks me how do you, what's the first step that you do? The very first step that you always wanna do is you wanna measure yourself. The reason why I always say that is because your measurements always change. So for example, I'm like 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 10 pounds heavier than what I normally am. So my measurements have changed. So anyways, I'm gonna measure myself real quick. I'm gonna get my measurements and I want the stripes to go vertical. So that way you don't, for people, people for some reason don't like horizontal stripes. I like horizontal stripes, but everyone's asking me to do vertical stripes. So for the sake of this sweater, I will make vertical stripes. All right, so I just finished doing uh, 22 inches of half double crochet. That's my length going from shoulder to width with a little bit of leeway so I can add a couple lines uh, going vertical to break up the color. I'm just gonna keep going half double crochet until I get a nice, uh, oh, I know my chest size. My chest size is 18 and a half. Um, so I did some cabling on it. Um, I'm not really liking how the color is playing out. So technically there's five different colors as it's changing. So given that in mind, it's gonna be only five colors playing from left to right. And then I have to go ahead and make a border on it. I'm not in, I'm not, I don't like how it's playing out the colors. So I think I'm gonna undo this. Yeah, cause I'm not liking this. I like, I want the colors to change a little bit more quicker than this. I'm gonna do this and then I'll see you guys right back. I think I got it. So I think what I'm gonna do is a combination of window pane and basket weave stitch. So I have this idea in my mind, hopefully it works out. You guys seem to always love the basket weave when I show it on my project. I am going to do basket weave to be weight for a drape. So that way when I do the window pane stitch, which is open stitch, it has a Gravity uses the basket weave as a weight to pull it down. So let me see how this is gonna look. Give me a moment, let me swatch it up, and then we'll move forward. For this one, I wanna do it in one entire piece, meaning from the back all the way over the shoulder to the front. And for me, my personal measurements, I just finished doing it. It's about 44 inches, 45. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a longer chain, which should be about three rows before the color changes, making the color changes a little bit more quicker. So I measured myself and I'm doing 44 inches of half of double crochet. I got 30 rock queued up right here. I am on season five, episode 11. So if you guys want to watch with me, I started all the way from the beginning since I opened up this channel and I am on season five, episode 11. After this, I will be watching a season of either uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia or I might start shit. Shit's Creek because a lot of you have been letting me know that there's a sweater on there that I can do. So I'm gonna start that, Let's check that out. All right, you guys, welcome. Good morning. It is the next day. 
The great thing about working in one piece from left to right is that you, once you reach halfway, you can actually swatch half of your art outfit. And then if you like what you did, you can continue doing the same thing. You just repeat it for the other half, or you can frog it there and fix what you don't like. So this is our swatch, okay? This is what we're gonna do. This is half of the garment right here. It looks crazy. I wanted it to have different stitches on it so you could see exactly how this yarn plays out, how it looks, and just how it interacts with each other. It looks amazing, it looks like a lot. <laughs> so this is half, okay? And then we're gonna attach it here. The neckle's gonna be here, and we're gonna repeat the other thing, but in reverse. So here we have the basket weave stitch. So if you want, you just do three rows. You can count one, two, three. Three rows of basket weave stitch. And then we move on to one row of window pane, double crochet, half double crochet, and another window pane. So window pane, half double, window pane. Then we go back to basket weave, but this time we're doing four, uh, four stitches instead of three. One more window pane. And here we're going to do a waffle, but instead of um, making this pop out, you're just doing a um braiding technique here so just it's supposed to be waffle but you get this cool effect with it i call it like a ladder effect so you're just doing a braid so front post on the back if you want to see the reverse so you can see how it is so just pop them out pop them out and then one stitch is on the other side two stitches reverse one stitch on the other side two stitches reverse and you get that nice effect of row 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 and you have the braiding going all the way down it's an illusion the, the, the technically doesn't go underneath these stitches it's just here but it looks like it goes all the way down i mean you could stop here and make it a scarf if you really wanted to <laughs> what you do so it's one piece you're gonna fold it and you're just gonna stitch mark now uh, starting a little bit give yourself some leeway in the back because you have to keep and count this section of your body it takes up surface area so just go a little bit in the back so that way um, you're not pulling this down as well when you adjust it on your shoulder stitch mark it and then stitch mark about 20 22 stitches that's for me my neckline here or however big you want it and then continue all the way down and when you come back up just put it into the chain that you're doing I'll show you guys now. reaching the finish line you guys i am on the final basket weave stitch which is only a few rows and then i will be able to close this up and we'll move on from there check it out guys all right so update guys i just finished sealing off one of the sides i'm saving the other side for when i come back to this green when i'm making the scarf because i don't want to use teal yarn on green yarn to close it up so i'm just gonna do the bottom right now do my ribbing and decrease a little bit to give it a little bit of a snug um at the waist all right so we finished the poncho now i'm working on the scarf which is just going to be a simple window pane stitch all the way through just to give it, make it nice and light. It is chunky, so you don't have to make too many closed stitches. So it's just gonna be a complete window pane scarf all the way around. Um, that's how much I have left of the cake. So there's definitely more than enough for the hat and the scarf, because the color changes here is 10 rows. So with four changes, I'll have uh, 40 rows. Quick update, guys. Look at this, check this out. Pure window pane all the way through nice and long and the great thing about the v-neck is that once you have the scarf you can just stick this part in to keep the wind from going out so now your two garments if you ever if you keep them separately now became one as so you're going outside look at that texture galore in case you don't know how to do a rim all you have to do is you see those two loops you just work in back loops and it creates that ribbing texture, which is also a cheat also. So if you don't wanna do my front post cheating for ribbing, 
you could just do this as well, which is how I begin my rims for the hat. All right, so day three of this challenge. I started the bottom, finished the rim, doing basket weave on the bottom and then window pane at the top. So any, uh, some stylistic tips I can give you guys when it comes to hats, as long as you focus on the ears and the temples and the forehead, making sure that that's nice and snug for the people, you can get very creative with the top part. That's why I can do window pane and not worry about the wind getting through into the hat because you have your hair, so it's blocking it. So as long as your temples and your ears are warm, uh, everything else is fine. So don't ever be afraid to make some wacky hats. Let me go ahead and finish this. Then we'll do the final review and then my final thoughts on this whole process and this yarn. So that was our challenge video for the new Karen anniversary cakes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So the whole point of this was I've been seeing a lot of comments about the pricing of this cake. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, use a coupon. You can always use a coupon for it, but I wanted to prove to you and show you that you can get your a bang for your buck. You can get a hat, hand warmers, scarf, and a sweater from one cake. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned how to do all of this and visually are able to see it, go ahead and rewind and rewatch the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But we have officially launched fall with my first fall 2020 design. And this is a head to toe design from the new Karen anniversary cakes. They are 100% acrylic and over a thousand yards in each cake. So many options to choose from. And make yourself this comfy sweater. It is so cozy. Like I just wanted to take a nap. <laughs> the order is basket weave, window pane, half double, window pane, basket weave, window pane, and then this is a uh, ribbing effect with uh, a braid underneath. So just pretend you're doing waffle, um, but instead of actually doing the waffle, the squares, just don't do the middle part. The middle part will be what the actual braiding is. And then it just turns into a v-neck. So all the way. You can put it in here to block out the wind. Uh, you can, so many options from this. So hopefully you found something that motivates you. And thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. We have the Fisherman Wool coming up. So I'm very excited with that. And we have a Wonder Woman sweater to celebrate the new movie trailer that came out with Lion Brand Retweet.